Howdy folks, this is your video on naming geometric figures. Um, I have split the screen for you into two parts, right? So on the left side, you'll see some slides that I'm gonna talk you through. And then on the right side, you'll see the notes page, the digital notes page that I made for you. If you would like to take your notes digitally with this document, that is totally fine. If you'd rather write stuff out yourself, um, on just a piece of paper, that's also fine. I'm currently working in Kami so that I can more easily draw and create shapes and things like that, all right? So I'm gonna go through a couple of ideas here for you, some terms, and then I've got a couple of practice problems for you at the end here. So let's jump into it. So at the start, we're mostly just talking about the basic geometry stuff, which you've heard a lot of these terms before, right? Point, line, angle, right? We kind of know what those things are. So let's go through and talk about how we name all of those things and then how we draw them, okay? So a point is literally exactly what it sounds like. It is a point in space. So the way that we name a point so that we can distinguish it from other points is we name these with a capital letter. So named with a capital letter. All right, and then if I wanted to draw an example here, I can just put right, it's literally a point and then I want to give it a capital letter, right? So that right there is point P. Okay. All right, lines come next. So I've already filled in the named part for you here. So you can name lines with any two points on that line. It does not matter which two you name it with, um, which you can kind of see on the uh, on the left side of your screen here. Okay, so we name these with any two points on a line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line here. Okay, the way you can tell the difference between a line and a line segment is that a line has two arrows, on either end, right? It goes on forever in both directions. Okay, so here's my line that I've drawn here, and I can name this using these two points that are on the line in any order that I want, right? So I can name this line AB with, and I draw my line symbol over the top, or I can call it an BA and switch those. Okay, and then sometimes you'll see a cursive lowercase letter next to the line, so you could also call this line M, okay? The key thing here is that order of your letters does not matter, right, because you have the same thing on either end. Now, if I had a third point on this line, say maybe in the middle right here, let's call it like C, for example, I could use any combination of these three values right here, right? I could use any combination of A, B, and C in order to name my line up here. As long as I use two of them, I am all set there, okay? All right, line segments come next. And again, it's exactly what it sounds like. A line segment is just a part of a line. The difference between a line and a line segment is that a line segment has two distinct endpoints. Right, so instead of arrows on both ends, it has just points on both ends. But again, because the the endpoints are the same, right, they're both points, then it doesn't matter what order I name them in. So I could call this line segment that I have drawn ST, and I'm going to draw my line segment over the top, see no arrows, or I can call it TS. Okay, again, order does not matter here. Order doesn't matter here at all. Right, and the reason order doesn't matter, again, is because both points are the same. Right in a line segment, both points are both endpoints are actual endpoints, and in a line, both endpoints have arrows on them. Now, a ray is something that looks like a line, but is a little bit different. It's like a combination of a line and a line segment. So a ray has one endpoint that's a point, 
and another endpoint that's an arrow. So it has, it goes on forever only in one direction. Okay, and this is the one where letter order does matter. Okay, All right, because the ray is only going out in one direction. So if you switch the order, that would mean that you would end up switching the direction that you went. Right. Um, so the way that we name these is start with the endpoint that doesn't have the arrow next to it. So in this case, that's M. Start with M then use the point that has uh, that's closer to the arrow and then you want to draw your arrow pointing to the right okay when you name it okay um, the end point right the one without the arrow is always listed first right so that's a key thing that we want to note for ourselves here this right here that the end point is always listed first very important there, okay? Right? Because, um, let me show you what would happen if we switched these. So, if I did ray and m, if I switched them, what that would look like is it would look like this. Right? This is not a plane. I'll erase this in a second. Um, but, so this would be ray n m right see how the arrow on the right here see how the arrow on the little symbol is closest to the point that has the arrow on it when you actually draw it right these two rays are completely different because they're pointing in opposite directions okay so really really important to remember that okay that's the thing that people get mixed up with the most when they're talking about rays all right okay then, planes is my next one. So a plane is just any 2D shape. It's just like an area of, of space, like of 2D space, okay? Right? It's named with, always named with three letters, okay? Three letters. So here I have F, G, and H, okay? And those three points that you name it with can't be in the same line, okay? Um, and the reason for that, which I'm hoping kind of makes sense, is if they were all together on the same line, then it would just be a line, right? If I took, if I took this point and moved it, um, if I took this G point and moved it between F and H, that would just make a line. It wouldn't make a plane. But order uh, does not matter here. Okay. Um, so any order is fine for planes. Uh, and then similarly to the way that lines are sometimes named with a lowercase cursive letter, sometimes you'll see um, very fanciful um, capital cursive letters to name planes, but most of the time we'll name them with the three points that are on there. Um, so this would be called plane. I'm going to call it FGH just so that I can go in alphabetical order, but you could put those three points in any order that you want, right? So that's lines, line segments, rays, and planes. And then the last bit that we need to get into in this video is angles, okay? So what an angle actually is, whoops, oh dear. Sorry, everybody, I'm struggling with my, <laughs> with my computer over here a little bit. So what an angle actually is, um, is it's two rays that are connected at a common point, okay? And I know I didn't give you a definition here, um, a space, but if you want to put the definition of an angle, here's what an angle is. Right? An angle is two rays that are, not that, yeah, that, that are joined at a single point called a vertex. Okay, so that's the definition of an angle. 
right? Which kind of makes sense, right? An angle has to have a bend in it in order for it to be an angle, right? Because otherwise it would just be a line, right? And angles then when they have that bend, right? That bend where that where the angle actually bends, where the 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 bending occurs is at this point called a vertex. Okay? So, there are three different ways that you can name an angle. Okay? Depending on the information that they give you in the picture, right? So, the first way that you can name an angle is use the angle symbol and a number. Okay, so sometimes, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it over here. I'm going to draw this angle that I have on the left hand side. Okay, so here's my angle, right? Uh, and I have a point here, point A. My vertex here is point B. And then I have two other points on this ray, this part of the angle, C and D, and then see how there's a number one in the middle, okay? So you can use the angle symbol and then the number in the middle, okay? It's important to note that the number in the middle is not how many degrees it is. It's just an identifier, right? So this would be angle one, right? So that's the way I would write that. So I'm down here on the second page here that says name. So if I'm naming it with method one, it's angle one. Okay. All right. Then naming method two is also a, a simpler version, right? So you would use the angle symbol and the vertex point of the angle. Okay. So here, the vertex of this angle that I have drawn is this guy right here, right? So I would call this angle B. So if I wanted to name it using that second method, I would call it angle B. Now, this method really only works if you have an angle like this that's a little bit more simple. It's It wouldn't work if you have two angles that share the same vertex. So I'm gonna draw it um, here under naming method three, um, but you don't have to draw this here. It's just an example. So if I had an angle that looked like this, so say I have a point here, A, here's B, here's C, and here's D. So if I had this picture right here, if you told me, hey, tell me the measure of angle B, I wouldn't know which angle you were talking about. I wouldn't know if you were talking about this angle right here, right, because its vertex is B. I wouldn't know if you were talking about this angle right here because its angle is B. And then I also wouldn't know if you were talking about this angle, right? The whole thing right here. I wouldn't know. Um, so when you have a picture that's more complicated like this one, where you have two adjacent angles, two angles stuck up against each other, uh, you have to be more specific when you name them. So you can't really use naming method number two. Okay. So let's go ahead and erase that extra drawing there. Because I don't need all of that. Okay, so the last method that we use to name angles is the most common, um, just because it's the most specific. So this is the most common. You would use the angle symbol and three points on the angle. Okay, All right. Uh, the first point is on one of the rays, right, or one part of the angle, one side of the angle. The second point is always the vertex, okay, and then the third point is on the other ray, or you can think of it as the other side of the angle, okay? So in my drawing that I have up here at the top, there's lots of different ways that I could name this angle, right? So I can name it angle A, 
B, C. All right, but I could also name it angle A, B, D, right? Because both of those follow the rules, right? A, B, C follows the rules. I start on one side, go to the vertex, then go to the other side. Same thing with A, B, D. I just skipped over point C. And you can go in either direction. So rather than start with point A, I could start with point C, for example. So I could call it angle C, B, A. I'm still following all the rules, right? I'm starting on one side of the angle, going to the vertex, and then moving to the other side. Right, so that means you can do the same thing here with point D. So I could call this angle D, B, A. Right? So similar to the way that we name lines and line segments, the order that you go in doesn't really matter as long as the second letter is the vertex. That's the most, most important thing when you're thinking about naming angles. Okay. All right. Next up is circles. We do a lot of stuff with circles later in the year, so I'm just going to go over a couple of basics, and I bet you you have already seen a lot of these terms before. So the first term here uh, for a circle is um, a chord. So a chord is just a line segment, which you can kind of see um, on the left side of my screen here. Right, see it over here, my very, very fancy large mouse. Okay, a chord is just any two points, right, a line segment that connects any two points on the circle. Right, so it's just cutting through the circle somehow. Okay, a diameter is probably a term that you've heard before. It's a special type of chord that cuts through the very middle of the circle. Okay, a radius goes from the center of the circle out to the edge. Okay, and then we also have this term concentric circles, right? Con means like together or the same and centric means center. So two circles that have the same center, right? So if you think of like a dartboard or the Target logo, or if you've ever seen those like, um, like hypnotizing um, circles, right? Those are all concentric circles because they have the same center, all right? Okay, so that is all of our definitions. So let's see if we can figure out some of these practice problems. So if you would like to try these on your own before you come back and uh, get the answers from me, pause the video right here. But if you feel like you need some more support and would like to just continue watching the video through and do this along with me, you can do that as well, right? Kind of learn at your own pace here, okay? So let's take a look here. So we want to figure out what term goes with each of these definitions. So the first term here says a segment with endpoints on a circle that passes through the center, okay? So it's a line segment, so it's got to be a quarter or a diameter, and it goes through the middle of the circle, right, which we have right here. It's this, the diameter, right? So you have that definition right there, okay? So, oh, here we go. So answer there has got to be diameter, okay? All right, let's look at B. B says uh, the common endpoint of two rays which form an angle. So what they're talking about is the point where the angle actually bends, right? And if you remember from up top, that is called the vertex, the vertex of the angle, okay? C is pretty simple, a location in space represented by a dot, that's a point, okay? Part D here is the point inside a circle that is equidistant from every point of the circle, so if we look at well, if we look at this picture on the left of a circle, the only point that's the same distance from the edge, like every edge of the circle, right? Every part of the edge or the circumference of the circle is the center point. Okay, so answer here is center, right? The circle's center. Okay. E says the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point. I didn't really go over this one, but that is the definition of a circle. Okay, right? 
in a circle, all of the points that make up the actual circle on the circumference are the same distance away from the center point. That's why you have a radius that's the same no matter what, right? If you think about like a clock, right, a circular clock, the radius is like the hands of the clock that move around as time goes on, right? Um, and it stays the same length no matter what time it is, no matter what point it's pointing to on the edge of the circle. Okay. All right, we're getting close to the end of uh, this question here. So F says two different rays that have the same initial point. And that's a little tricky, right? Uh, and I'll just tell you that is called a line. Weird, right? But I'm going to show you why. Okay, so if we have two rays, okay, Okay. So if we have two rays, see like this, we have a ray here, and this is its starting point, and then you draw another one going in the other direction, that's a line, right? So you could think about it that way, or this could also be an angle, right? Because if I have a ray right here, I have an end point, and it goes out like this, and then maybe that second ray, it's still starting right here at this point, but it goes off in a different direction like this. That's an angle, right? So you could think about that one one of two ways. Um, right? So either a line or, oops, sorry, I forgot to type the second one. So a line or an angle. All right, and then part G is my last one here on this one. So it says the distance from the center of a circle to the point on a circle. So the segment that goes from the middle of the circle out to the edge is called a radius. All right. Okay, last, last bit here. So two just says, how would you name each of these symbols, right? So basically, um, you have these three symbols that look kind of like the symbols that we have up here, right? For lines, line segments, rays, angles. So let's figure out what they are, okay? My first clue here is that they're all named with three, uh, or with two points, sorry. So that means it can't be an angle. It's got to be one of these, a line, a line segment, or a ray, right? It can't be a plane because a plane has to have three letters. Same thing with an angle. It's either one letter or, or three letters, but not two, okay? So each of these has got to be a line, a line segment, or a ray, okay? And then I can tell which one it is based on the symbol at the top. So for part A here, this has no arrows, right? The symbol over... AB has no arrows, right? No arrows means that's a line segment, okay, right? Part B has two arrows, so that means it's got to be a line, and then part C only has one arrow, so that means it has to be a ray. All right, y'all. So I hope that um, that all of this made sense and you were able to follow along with me as we took these digital notes here. Uh, if you have any questions or you're going back and looking at this and um, you're not exactly sure what I did, please send me an email or a message and let me know uh, so that I can give you a hand with whatever it is you are missing. Right? I will see you in the next video.